hello uh, please do subscribe if you aren't already so today I'm going to do something a bit different and I'm over the next few days I'm probably going to be going out and about in my camper van and I'm going to be doing some plein air work uh, in sketchbooks and on paper so what I want to do today is sh share with you and give you some top tips uh, about what to take and what to think about uh, when you go out and about on location so I've got in on the desk here my backpack bag it's quite old and tatty now and it's a Ridgeway and I'm not even sure you can now get them and I will be replacing it but I'll share that sort of separately for now I'm using this bag I'm going to take with me some sketchbooks I don't want to be taking heavy sketchbooks with me because I'm going to try and get most things into the backpack although I have a camper I'm not a great one for thinking I need to have because I've got somewhere to store things, to sort of start to take excessive materials with me, because I really believe that the more you take, the more difficult it can become. So I'm going to take quite a range of materials, as I'm going to share with you, but I'm not overloading it. Everything has to fit into this backpack. And if I'm out and about, I'm not necessarily going to take it all with me at one point in time. But what I want to be able to do is to fit it all in the backpack, apart from uh, something I'm going to share with you in a second, which is the paper, because obviously A3 won't fit in. So anyway, let me start with talking about the sketchbook. So the first thing I'm going to take is this uh, sketchbook here. Now, this is a uh, Sea White of Brighton. I've stuck things on the cover, but it's a Sea White of Brighton, small, chunky uh, sketchbook. And it's the smallest square one that they do. Um, and as you can see I've already got stuff in it but I'm going to take it and continue uh, using that one I like the paper it's a medium sort of weight uh, cartridge paper about 170 GSM and uh, it, it works quite well for all sorts of mixed media and uh, it's not too big the bigger chunky ones I find too much for taking out and about with me although I do use them in the studio so that's the first thing. The second thing is a watercolour sketchbook. Now, this is an A5 size and it's a hammer muley and uh, it's really nice paper. It's 200 GSM watercolour paper. And uh, I am probably going to take this one with me. I usually or quite often I use an A4, but I've been wanting to get started with this A5 for a while. So I think I'm going to uh, use that one but it's a hammer muley anyway. I'm also going to take with me a couple of Sea White of Brighton. And as you'll hear from what I'm going to share with you, I'm going to try and do it a little bit differently with collage on location this time. I'm not, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I am going to resist pre-preparing uh, the sheets and I'm going to take collage paper with me and I'm going to attempt to do something similarly to how I have been doing so far for my 100 day project, where I actually cut out and use paper. I don't know yet whether I'm going to work over the top of the paper, but I may well not. I may well try and do something quite different. Um, but I'm going to take a couple with me because I want, might want to just do some general uh, mixed media work in one of them and then collage in the other. But I'm going to take uh, those anyway. So that's all of the sketchbooks I'm taking uh, because otherwise I'm not going to fit them in the bag. And what I'm also going to take, and you probably can't see it here because it's obviously white, is this is A3 Sea White of Brighton 200 uh, GSM, 220 GSM uh, weight uh, cartridge paper. This is my preferred cartridge paper. It's really uh, good. It takes all sorts of media and punishment and uh, I buy it bigger and I cut it up and it's an A3 and that's the only exception to uh, not fitting in the bag and what I'm going to do let me just bring it up on here is I've got a folder uh, that I put the paper in and I've got a board in there for working on let me just pull it out if I can so that I can show you so this is the board that um, I'll probably work on Okay, so in terms of what's on the table, if we talk, if I talk you through what's on the top um, to start with, because those are all the different materials, and then these at the bottom, some of the equipment and stuff, I will go through that as well. So starting at the top on this side, um, I am going to take my uh, 
portable palette, uh, watercolor palette. And I just realized, I didn't remember what it was, what it make it was, but it's arttoolkit.com. And so that's just um, a very small palette actually. So it can be irritating if you like to take a bit more paint, um, but it's quite handy because the different, pa uh, different um, pans are magnetized so they don't fall out. So that's that. I'm also going to take uh, some gouache. Uh, these are new because uh, previously I've used some quite cheap gouache, but uh, I invested in some uh, Windsor and Newton, and so I'm probably going to decant those into a, a plastic tub or something, but for now they're in the box. So that's gouache, and gouache, in case um, you didn't realize, is, is actually uh, opaque watercolor. So if you don't have lots of different colours, you can, in theory, use white gouache with uh, some watercolour. Um, but at any rate, that's what I use that instead of using acrylic out and about. It can be a little bit easier to use, a bit more practical. Uh, I'm also possibly going to take these three inks. These are all Liquitex inks and I've got um, a turquoise, uh, a burnt sienna, and a green, um, just a just a range really. Um, nothing nothing sort of too uh, deep and meaningful about that, apart from the fact that I'm going to go to the coast. So I reckon that turquoise and green might be a good idea. And then if we move on to this pot here, this is where I'm, all my other mixed media are, uh, apart from acrylic, which I'm going to come to, uh, and apart from soft pastels. But in here, I've got uh, a pencil. I've got my uh, ink pen, which is filled with waterproof ink. I've got uh, a graphite. I've got charcoal, uh, soft willow charcoal and compressed charcoal. I've got a number of different ink tents, watercolour pencils. I like them because they're very nice and creamy. You can see by the state of these, I've been using them in the studio whilst painting. Um, but I do like to use an ink tense pencil. These are woodies, so both the ink tense and these woodies are water soluble. So I've just got three different colours. I've got a turquoise, a green and an orange. And then I've got just a handful I've just grabbed of oil pastels in case I decide to use soft pastel and oil pastel as a combo because I sometimes do that and it's quite has quite a nice effect. And importantly, uh, the pencil sharpeners for all of those things. So the pencil, which that small one is for the intense and the big Stabilo one is for the woodies. I've got a rubber in there as well, in case I want to rub into the charcoal. I'm also taking uh, a selection of acrylics. So I've just got a yellow, a blue and a red broadly, uh, and I'm gonna put some white into this jar. So I've got yellow ochre, manganese blue, and this is a burnt sienna, so not strictly a red, but it's a a ready brown which I thought could be quite handy so uh, if I decide to use acrylics and then finally in terms of materials uh, on here um, is uh, some soft pastels and these are my unison landscape uh, pastels and uh, that those pastels I'll often use either on their own with ink or with oil pastel so that's uh, something that's very important anyway. So I've made, told you about my jar. That's going to be for my white uh, paint acrylic. Uh, these are to clip paper onto boards or to keep my sketchbooks open. Um, I then have a selection of different tools for applying the media. So I've got um, a feather. I've got a palette knife, a, a, a wooden fork, some scrubby, what I call scrubby, poor quality, knackered, um, sort of poor quality uh, paint brushes. And that's for the acrylic, because they do get messed up, the, the acrylics, when using the uh, paint out and about, you do mess up the brushes. This is a half inch dagger brush that I use for my watercolour. And then I've got a stick and a bamboo pen in case I want to use it with the ink, sort for scratching in. I've got a pair of scissors because I am going to be using collage. I've got a print stick for the collage and then I've got a, a water spray and some water pots. 
and this is for holding my brushes. And the thing that's missing off the table at the moment is my tissues and rags, which I need to add. Um, but they're very important, obviously, when we're out and about uh, drawing and painting. So these are the papers that I'm going to take with me. So these are, as you can see, black and white. Um, I've created these using a combination of a permanent marker and a fountain pen, depending. So there's just a variety of very graphical looking uh, marks, sheets of marks, which I find can be quite handy. And then this one was done much more loosely with a dip pen an almost kind of calligraphy type of, of style. Um, so anyway, so those are the those are they. Um, I've got um, some that I've some these ones I've made on the gel uh, jelly plate already. Just a couple of yellowy kind of greeny ones, and then these were from my painting palette the other day, and I just literally brushed some of the paint onto these pieces, knowing that I was going to go to the coast. I thought these could this could could work, so I've got those as well. And then these are just text from magazines, uh, from dictionaries, that's pattern paper, some receipts, uh, just a variety of different sizes and scales and density. Then I've got some plain paper and I've got some magazine um, patterned paper, uh, sort of fairly sort of simple and uh, some some sort of some purchase paper actually and that's a, a paper bag and that's a napkin so you know quite a variety of of colored uh, black and white uh, patterned and and plain just to end with i thought i would share with you uh the bag packed and obviously i've got it all open but that's only and things sticking out but that's only so as to remind myself and to show you things it, it does actually all fit in so let me just go through so i've got a very convenient small first pocket and in that pocket i put things like glue sticks my water my spray my hand gel uh just because it's a small pouch and it's easily accessible at the front here so that's that now the next, I don't think I'll be able to zip it up whilst I'm holding the holding the camera. Anyway, the second pouch what I have have in here is uh, let me before I forget to tell you, um, I didn't have it on the desk, but I have some cheap hairspray, a small canister uh, that I use for fixing soft uh, pastels and things out on location. So things like charcoal, pastel, things that smudge. I use the hairspray to fix it in the sketchbooks or on the paper. So in this uh, particular pocket, I've got the acrylics at the bottom uh, some water and the watercolour because it's a, a little net uh, that it's held in quite nicely. And my brushes uh, are in here uh, and tools. So that's what's in that, that pouch. And then the, the next pouch, this is where all of the materials are in the, in the plastic containers. So on the top one, I've got my uh, mixed media, the one underneath, I've got my gouache, and then I've got my soft pastels here. Uh, and I've got my white paint in a jar. So that's the main bulk of the materials in there. And then finally, uh, in the last pouch, and let me just see if I can show you so you can see. I've got that sticking out just so that I can remind myself that I need to show you that all my papers um, I put into a wallet so that they're easily accessible and easily sort of pushed push together uh, rather than having them all over the place. And um, I use clips to keep all the separate, you know, the piles of different things together within that, that pouch. And that will then fit uh, in this site, in this back uh, pocket where I have all my sketchbooks. So as I showed you, I've got the uh, the chunky one, I've got my watercolour one, and I've got two pocket Constantinas. I don't think I mentioned in detail what they are, but they're the, sm they're the small pocket Constantinas uh, from uh, Sea White of Brighton. And uh, they're quite a, a sort of small handy size. So just a bit bigger actually than, than an A6, because I was just measuring it against some papers. Um, so I've got two of those, I probably won't need them. And as I say, I'm not going to, this will all fit in this bag, but I'm not going to take them all out at once. And one thing to say is that what I always do is at the beginning of my sessions or before I'm, I'm sort of setting off, I'm deciding what I'm going to do that day. So I'm not doing everything I talked about. So I might do, for example, I might work in my Constantina and do collage work. So that's one thing. And then I might decide to do uh, some uh, colour first watercolour uh, in uh, my watercolour sketchbook. And I just take out the materials that are relevant to that. I'm not taking everything just in case I decide randomly that I want to do a particular 
other study and you could say well why don't I do that and you know you limit yourself well actually I think it's more limiting to take everything because you just get when you're out and about and you're looking and there's so much to see you just get overwhelmed so keep it simple uh, I don't do more than two different sort of approaches in a day uh, sometimes I just do one because you want to do multiple studies with that technique and so necessarily uh, that will take up a lot of your time so I hope that's been helpful. Uh, please do subscribe and like and, and love to hear your comments. Uh, and uh, I'll catch you next time. And I will be sharing uh, my adventures uh, as I go out and about as well. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.